Hello, this is Oscar Beckler detailing the Cataphract rig, which is a character file that uh, is now in version 1.2 and soon to be released on BlendSwap.com. Uh, I uh, encourage you to download it and go play with the rig yourself, but I'm going to show you off uh, some of the features in it. First off, let's take a look at the scene layers. If we go to layer 1, you can see the rig and also this box thing. Layer 2 is where the uh, render character is, so have this layer turned on when you're rendering. Layer 3 is the animation rig, and as you can see, uh, this one animates very fast, whereas the cinema rig goes very slow because it's so big and subsurfed and stuff. So, very, very quick, very slow to animate. Layer uh, 11 has the environment, and then layer 12 has the lights on it. So when you're rendering, have layer 11, 12, and 2 turned on. <clears throat> uh, lastly, uh, layer uh, 19 has a number of technical toys that uh, are involved in how the rig functions, including this mesh deform cage, this IK spline based bone setup, and the actual splines that it's referencing. And then lastly, the junk layer, which has Lots of widget shapes that the bones are using for draw shapes, and this very old version of the character rig. So let's take a look at the rig. Uh, and for animation purposes, I once again have layer 1 and 3 turned on. Uh, the meshes on layer 3 have absolute weights for each bone, and so they run a lot smoother and faster. If we take a look at the rig, you'll see that layer 1 is turned on, on the rig layers. And uh, in my opinion, you can animate this entire character using only the bones on uh, this layer. It has IK feet, so you can move them around. Uh, and all the stuff on this rig is designed around being squashy and stretchy to some extent. And here you can see I'm stretching it out. You can also maintain the volume or choose not to. And if you turn this to zero, it will just have a little more. It'll maintain its thickness as you stretch it out. I generally like it having that pulled taffy look. So let's turn it back. <coughs> you can also switch from IK to FK here and all the FK joints are on layer 2. If we look at the spine joints for the neck, you'll see that they are very fun. They rotate a big swath of the neck and really you can get a ton of uh, pose for the neck just using two controls which I believe is the way to do it. Uh, the less animation, the less work to animate, the better. And if you want to get a little extreme pose, you can use these intermittent bones to create a more dynamic angle like that. If we uh, also try scaling these, uh, they also have lots of scalar function so that you can have this neck stretch out and bite somebody far away. I don't know. Use your imagination. The head bone also scales and the jaw bone rotates. Uh, and additionally, the tail is also largely controllable by uh, a mere two bones. Uh, I also include the tip for you know, quick little whip action at the very end of an animation. If you grab this bone, this is the character's center of gravity, so uh, it uh, uh, does a lot of the basic positioning. This first spine joint after that has a lot of the controls, including switching the spine from IK to FK, and also can scale. And this bone up here just controls the center of gravity for um, where the, a lot of the sesamoid bones, like uh, the shoulder and where the neck starts, is. Lastly, there are these two bones which control the howda. A howda being a large structure on top of an elephantine creature that tends to hold people. Uh, and it's just so that you can make it look like it's swaying in the wind and just not look totally dead. Because it's going to be creepy. If we look at layer 2, this has lots more fun little uh, controls in it. Uh, 
once again, you can probably animate very competently having never touched this layer, but if you want more flexibility, these bones do exist. So, for instance, every single spine bone uh, is uh, adjustable. There's also FK joints for the feet. So if we switch these to IK from IK feet to FK feet, now we can rotate using these. The spine can also be switched from IK to FK. And now you'll notice that these big hand joints can let you do lots of fun stuff. And it's also all very squash and stretch based. You can also switch the head joints to be IKFK, and then you can grab your head. Whee! So yeah, a lot of fun toys in here. You'll have to play with it to really understand all of them. Uh, there's stuff I've rigged on this and totally forgot that I did, and then suddenly discover I have a cool feature. If we move along on the rig bones, uh, you'll see here the root bone. A lot of this is uh, <clears throat> a lot of this rig started with uh, chunks of Nathan Vegdahl's excellent rigify rig, uh, and then modified it to adjust for uh, IK spine or IK splines and lots of squash and stretch. So if you've used uh, rigify, a lot of the layers will be very familiar. All the deformed bones on are, are on layer seven. 18, and then the mechanical bones are on layer 19, and lastly the organization bones on layer 20. Now you may have noticed that there's not a whole lot of deformed bones. Why is that? Well, let me explain. If we take a look at the mesh hierarchy, this big animation mesh does not have a armature modifier on it, and the reason is because instead of using an armature modifier, it's being controlled by a mesh deform modifier, which is this cage over here. So this cage is getting referenced in that, and that's how the character moves around. If we look at this, it has two separate armature modifiers on it. One is the initial rig, and the other is the spline rig. Now the reason for this is when you're using IK splines for, uh, to control your bones, it gets very, very complex hier hierarchically, and it doesn't seem to like it if uh, it's controlled by two meshes. So I have two separate uh, skeletons: one for IK stuff, and one, or one for spline stuff, and one for non-spline stuff. Oops. Additionally, because there are two rigs, it kind of hierarchically got kind of mad at me, and so. To control the character, you have this cube, and this functions as the origin for both of them. So as it animates, it's actually a walk cycle that goes over and over. It's just this cube mo moves forward on the y-axis. So that's what the rigging setup is like. Let's take a look at the compositing setup. I don't do anything unbelievably crazy. Well, maybe I do. Uh, I take a mist, I take the mist pass and I run it through some color ramps, I just play around with it, and then I layer that over this. Uh, I'm also using a node group full of normal stuff to, if we take a look at this, uh, to recolorize this a little bit with a dodge uh, overlay. I also vector blur it and glare it because everyone has to glare and motion blur everything. Additionally, I have this classical painting by. Never mind. All right. So as I was saying, I have this painting by Solomon Karodi one of the Orientalist painters during the Egyptomania craze of the 18th or 19th century. And I use that just as a color palette reference because 
you should be trusting in artists smarter and better than yourself. And I then clearly ignore it with a blue sky and too much light. But anyways, other things that I do is I glare it, I use a soft overlay filter, which I got from Lucery.it. Uh, he's a wonderful artist, uh, and I love his website. He has a number of compositing setups for uh, scene previs of lots of different filters. And then what you can do is you can just use uh, Shift F1 to uh, link them into your scene, and then it will be in your groups when you have that. So, as you can see, it just makes it a little different. Next up, I create a vignette using Andrew Price's uh, lovely little trick, which I believe he attributed to the inimitable Mike Pan. And then once I have that, I colorize it. And then I just multiply it over the entire thing. So that gives it this nice darkness around the edges, a nice glowy center. And that's basically how I composited this. Uh, once again, this will soon be up on BlendSwap under Creative Commons license uh, attribution. So if you put my name on it, you can use it for whatever you want. And I encourage you to uh, add to the scene and even upload your own. Uh, I'm Oscar Beckler. I hope you enjoyed this uh, demonstration of my character. Uh, I encourage you to follow me on Twitter at Ogbog, O-G-B-O-G. -G. I'm also a regular blogger. You can find me at ogbog.blogspot.com. And lastly, you can subscribe to this very YouTube channel. Thanks!